Hey guys, Daniel from Team Prebrose here. We are at German National Championships 2019, and we have the one, the only, Ryan Jacobs. So, Ryan, you didn't play the main event here. No, because I already played the Nationals, uh, and, and we're only allowed to play one. Uh -huh. you, know. you did something pretty exciting, though. Yes. What did you do today? I played uh, in the German Speed Duel National Championship, so... Uh, but still a Nationals. I mean, you played in the National Championship. Did you do anything interesting while playing in the National Championship? Uh, I, I think I won the event, so uh, that that's pretty good. Pretty I think. good. Yeah. You might say it's your lucky day? It, it definitely was a lucky day. Cool. So, for people who aren't familiar with Speed Duel, how does it compare to normal Yu-Gi-Oh? What do you like about it? Um, I like the fact that it's, it's more simplified and you actually have more interaction. Sometimes uh, you sit down for a game of normal Yu-Gi-Oh! and after 15 minutes it's over and you still haven't really done anything because your opponent was doing a 15 minute combo. And you know, some people think that's amazing and they want to do that for the rest of their life. But I think that you, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh should go should be going back and forth and interaction and decision making and a uh, oh, battle phase. And it has a bit of a classic sort of feel to it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you you feel like a uh, guy on the TV show or something. Yeah. Cool. And also, there are the special skill cards, right? Yes. Uh, thanks to the skill cards, you basically become one of the characters from the show, and you have a special ability that you can use during the duel. And what character did you choose? I chose uh, Joey Wheeler with his Lucky Day skill. Okay, do you want to show the audience the skill card before we get into the profile? Uh, yeah, because there's a few cards that interact with my skill card. Uh, so basically, uh, what this says is, uh, once per duel, you can uh, reveal it to your opponent, pay a thousand life points, and choose the outcome of a die roll or a coin toss. So uh, it, It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, that is a very unique skill. So we will get down to the profile. Yes. Um, we will put the cards here. Yes. And there are also these lovely wristbands. Yeah, you gotta collect them all, like the uh, Infinity Stones. Did you get them for playing in the event? Uh, yeah, you got one. So, right. uh, so, yeah, they're really nice. They have Speed Duel embossed on them on the back. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anyway, without further ado, what were you playing? So, like, uh, yeah, Gravekeepers, because uh, there's a very compact monster lineup. Uh, just like normal Gravekeeper decks, you play uh, three Gravekeepers Recruiter. Uh, when it leaves the field from your control, you get to uh, add a Gravekeeper with 1500 or less defense from your deck to your hand. And I think that's all of the Gravekeepers in the Speed Tool format currently. Because yeah. we don't yet have Spy or Guard, you know, it's, it's all a bit toned down. There's no Ash Blossom in the format. <laughs> no, no, no. You, your skill card is not going to get uh, get negated or anything. So uh, Then we play uh, three Gravekeepers Ambusher. Now, uh, it has an effect. It's not super relevant. Uh, when it's flipped phase up, you can put a card from the opponent's graveyard back in their deck, which I did once. Uh, I think it was... Oh, yeah. Uh, in a mirror match against my buddy, I put his uh, only monster in the graveyard back in the deck to... Uh, prevent his right of spirit from happening. And I play uh, two Gravekeepers Oracle, the God card. He looks a bit like me. Uh, <laughs> so you can basically attribute one, two, or three monsters to summon him, and he gets effects based on how many you tribute it. Uh, one of the effects is that the attack and defense of all of your opponent monsters goes down by 2000, which is simply the best effect. Permanently. Permanently, okay. yeah. Uh, the uh, second most relevant effect is to destroy all of the opponent's uh, set monster cards, which sometimes does come up, because uh, there are cards that trigger when they're destroyed by battle, but not when they're destroyed by card effect. Like uh, Yomi Ship, uh, Bird Face, there's probably one more, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the least relevant effect is to gain uh, attack equal to the levels of the Gravekeeper monsters you attributed for it times 100. So, are you generally tribute summoning that for one mode or for two modes? Uh, one is something that comes up very often. Uh, it, it did happen that I tribute uh, to, that I had to tribute multiple monsters for it. Like in the finals, my opponent was playing Burn, and he had two of my monsters equipped with uh, Mask of the Accursed, which prevents them from attacking and does 500 burn damage each of their standby phases. And I was gonna lose them, I was gonna lose. And then I drew my second copy of Gravekeeper Oracle, attributed to monsters that uh, the masks were attached to, and from there on it was a piece of cake. Nice. 
That's it for the monsters. Just eight of them. Okay, that's a very like small Gravekeeper package, right? Because there's a lot of different... Yes, basically what needs to happen is you need to open with one of your little guys. Uh, if, if that doesn't happen, it, 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 that's troublesome. But you play 6 out of 20, so... Mm -hmm. Then for spells, uh, Dicefoon for the lucky day. Uh, Dicefoon is a card that requires you to roll a die and you get uh, effects based on the result. So if you're not very lucky, you roll a 1 or a 6 and that gives you 1000 damage. But if you roll 2, 3 or 4, it becomes a mystical space typhoon that doesn't target. If you're very lucky, you roll a 5 thanks to your skill. And that makes it a twin twister for which you don't need to discard, so it destroys two cards on the field without targeting. Uh, well, spell or traps. So this is uh, the interaction for which I'm playing the skill. And are there a lot of spell and trap cards in the format that you need to discard? Uh, battle traps are very relevant in the format, like Windstorm of Ataqua and Kunai with Chain. Right. Yeah. So, so you clear them before you play monsters and then you can kind of establish a board? Mm -hmm. Yes, taking them out in the opponent's uh, end phase so they can't use it on your turn, that, that's, that's yeah. how it goes. Speaking of trap cards, we're playing a lot of them. We're playing three Windstorm of Ataqua, which changes all of the opponent's monsters' battle position. Uh, you'll usually be using this to prevent attacks from going through, but it can also be handy to uh, switch monsters from defense into attack position. For example, after you have uh, turned their attack into zero with Gravekeeper's Oracle, and they think they're smart and they put them back to defense mode, and you just pull them right back into attack position. Also, a uh, uh, classic Joey favorite, Kunai with Chain. Uh, it has two uh, effects. The first one is when the opponent uh, attacks, you can switch it into the uh, monster into defense mode. The other effect uh, is to equip it to a monster and have it gain 500 attack points, but you can also use both of them. So you can be smart and do damage step plays with this, or just use it to prevent attacks. Both effects are very relevant. Then we have one of the few ways to special summon in speed to a format, uh, in the form of Triple Rite of Spirit which is basically a Call of the Haunted for Gravekeepers. You special summon one Gravekeeper monster from your graveyard. And uh, my, my tech card for the deck is uh, one ready for interception, which is Book of Moon for warriors or spellcasters. And luckily that is most of the relevant monsters of the format. Like you deal with Swordswoman and... All the Amazonas, all the Gravekeepers in a mirror match. Um, against Burn, you can also put their uh, Swordsman face down or your own monster that was equipped with Mask of the Accursed. Yeah. Even against Blue Eyes, it has utility because they summon Lord of D, they I grab their Flute of Summoning <laughs> Dragon and you flip it face down. Can I, can I keep this just for three minutes? Thank you. You put that out. <laughs> I don't edit. <laughs> it stays. <laughs> it stays. Somebody was trying to steal our magic, but it, it'll be fine. Um, okay, so that's the main deck. That's the main cards. deck. 20 cards. Is there anything you would change with that? That's a good question. I knew this question was coming, but I didn't <laughs> think about it. Let's um, go to the side deck, and then we'll come back to changes. Don't you want to see my fusions? Extra deck. Let's go. It, it has all of the Joey favorites. It has a... Uh, Joey didn't use this. Uh, <laughs> it has Alligator Sword Dragon. Nice. Flame Swordsman. Nice. A Thousand Dragon. Then uh, a Rabbit Horseman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to spice things up. Get some variety in there. And the Meteor Black Dragon. Uh, at the start of the duel, your skill card is face down. Mm -hmm. So you can just have your extra deck sitting in your extra deck zone and have them think that you're playing Palominization. And, uh, yeah. Palomindization, for people who don't know, lets you substitute a monster for a fusion summon. It lets you substitute any normal monster in your hand for a fusion monster. Yeah. So, uh, what I also did against opponents that didn't know me, just uh, count the turns by using uh, a die on my Joey skill card, so they would maybe think that I'm playing Last Gamble, which is a different skill of Joey. Is that allowed? Probably is. You are allowed to keep that. Yeah. You are allowed to track turns, yes. Then for the, the, the side deck, uh, you're allowed to have a 5 card side deck, and that's really interesting in this format, because your deck is a lot smaller. Uh, also, the, the meta game was kind of unknown to me, so... Uh, but anyway, I played one Possessed Dark Soul. This card is amazing against Relinquished. What it does is, you tribute it, and you permanently take control of all of their level 3 or lower monsters. 
So uh, this definitely won me the game. Then I play uh, another Joey favorite, Time Wizard. Nice. Everyone knows who this does, right? Uh, and you can also use this to manipulate uh, coin toss. So uh, that was pretty cool. I used this against uh, a blue eyes player to get rid of their monsters. Pretty good. One thousand life points for Dark Cold seems pretty strong. For Raigeki even. For <laughs> <laughs> then this card was amazing today, uh, Warrior Elimination. Uh, not only did I play against the, the Burn deck, which played Amazon of Swordswoman, uh, I also played against uh, Warrior Beatdown uh, with Gear Free to Iron Knight and such. It really was a Joey day for everyone. Uh, this destroys all warriors, as you might have guessed by the card name. So this was a blowout card. Then I played one Dust Tornado. Uh, just to make sure that I had extra spell or trap removal. And the card that I didn't need today, but was really good in playtesting, Blast Held by a Tribute. Uh, what, what matchup is that for? It's for the Gravekeeper matchup. Right. When your opponent attacks with a monster that was Tribute Summoned, you destroy that monster and they take a thousand points of damage. So when they attack you with their Gravekeeper's Oracle, you can flip this and get so much uh, ahead in the game. Yeah. Awesome. Well, back to the question from before. Are there any changes that you would make to the main or side or extra deck? I would consider somehow fitting in a second uh, Warrior Elimination, depending on how popular the, the Warrior Beatdown and Amazonas deck would get. Yeah. But uh, overall, I, I'm really happy with the result. Awesome. Uh, so, finally, do you have any advice for people looking to get into the Speed Duel format? Uh, advice? Uh, I, I think it's definitely something fun. It doesn't really cost a lot of money to get into because the format is really cheap compared to uh, the, the regular TCG. So, uh, if, if you haven't tried it out yet, just try it out. And, and if, if you like classic Yu-Gi-Oh, if you're a fan of the original anime, you should definitely give it a go because it really captures that feel and I, I really do hope that Speed Duel has a bright future. Cool. Awesome. Uh, we're very excited for Speed Duel as well, so hopefully we will see more of it and we'll see more of you. Do you have any shout-outs you'd like to give? Yes, I'd like to do a shout-out to my team, our post card game crew, especially to uh, Danik who is also here. Get over here, get over here. This is uh, the guy that inspired me to, uh, to perfect the Gravekeeper deck. <laughs> uh, also to uh, Michael Steinmann, from, I think he's from America, right? Yeah, he's American. Yeah, uh, he helped me out with the side deck. He said, hey, you have to side deck Time Wizard, so uh, I, I did. Uh, so yeah, those are uh, my inspiration sources that led me to play in this deck. Awesome, thank you very much. Congratulations, and we will see you in a new track. Uh, yes, I will be helping out with uh, the live stream. So, uh, yeah, so if you have questions about Speed Duel, Ryan will be there. I will be there.